Hello YouTube world, it's me Jordan Ray again and I'm making part two of my AppMaker tutorial walkthroughs. Before we start part two though, we need to actually set up a Cloud SQL database for AppMaker if you don't already have one set up. And it's a pretty simple process. You kind of just have to do the choose your own adventures as you follow along with you know what it's asking you to do. However, sometimes it helps to kind of see how that process works. So you need a domain administrator to set up a project inside your domain. And that looks something like this. My domain is jordanray.com and I've created an AppMaker Cloud SQL project. You can do that by just clicking new project. I'm not gonna create a new one right now, but really simple, just give it a name. Um, I have 30 projects remaining. Ooh, I gotta delete some stuff. 30 should be plenty for the rest of my life, however. Okay, so once you've got that created, as I do here, one thing you do wanna make sure of is when you first create that, give it a name, in the upper right-hand corner, there'll be a little notification. And this will spin for a little while as it creates your project. Wait for that to finish spinning and then make sure that you have your project selected here. The next thing you've gotta do is head to the navigation menu in the upper left and then come down and find your SQL category or SQL, depending on how you want to pronounce it. I think they're both acceptable pronunciations. SQL, SQL, structured query language. And what you're going to do is create instance. As you can see here, I already have mine created, but I'll show you what that looks like here. The first choice you have to make is MySQL, Postgres, or um, SQL Server, choose MySQL. And down here, you'll notice it says first generation MySQL instances are being decommissioned soon, but you can create one here. Ignore that. In the actual documentation for AppMaker, it tells you to select second generation anyways. So now they've just removed that. So if you're looking for that option, just know that it's, it's basically being deprecated. And then in order to actually create your instance, you need to give it a name. You need to set up a password and then choose a region and zone. Um, you can choose anywhere. The documentation suggests US Central 1 because the server that's gonna be running the AppMaker scripts anyways is located in that US Central 1 zone. So to have the database in the same location is ideal. And then you wanna choose, well you have the option to choose uh, MySQL 5.6 or 5.7. I would just choose 5.7 unless you know more about MySQL um, and you have some specific reasons for choosing 5.6. And then you can just cl click create. And this is another thing where you're gonna have to wait a few minutes. I'm gonna just hit cancel right now because I've already created mine. But it does take a few minutes before it is recognized back inside your admin panel. Because what you have to do is head back to your and additional Google services and then head into AppMaker and then head into your database settings and click on help me set up Cloud SQL. And you should actually then get a little uh, pencil mark here. You'll, on mine, it says a default AppMaker Cloud SQL instance is already set up. I've, already, I've just done this recently, so um, I'm currently set up. But you can click on this pencil, or maybe it will give you the options right here if you don't already have them specified. But then you need to select the project and database that you just created in your cloud console. And you'll notice it says changes may take up to 24 hours to propagate to all users. It did not take that long for me, but it did take a little bit of time. So when you hit save, go ahead and uh, make yourself a coffee or uh, take a little break from the computer for a while. Um, maybe you have something else to work on or just take a walk around the block. Um, because when you come back, you should be ready for AppMaker. What I noticed too is that it gave me an option for a ton of other templates now. Right before it was just giving me blank application and then starter project, I think, or maybe starter app. But now I've got all these templates. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out all these projects and ignore all my brand new templates and get started with a blank application.
Okay, so now that I'm in, I'm gonna go ahead and rename this to employee data. And let's get started with part two. The first thing we gotta do is create a model. This is why we set up that database. So next to data, let's click the plus sign. We're gonna go with the Google Cloud SQL recommended database. And the model name we're going to call employee data. We'll then click on the data sources tab. And we've got the employee data that we just created. And let's take a look at that. All of the defaults are set up here. Um, I just wanted to note a few of the things that are important. Manual save mode and automatically load data. These would be relevant if you were trying to create a submit button or actually pass data from forms. And so you might need to change those settings here. For this employee data app we're building, we're just gonna go right back to the fields. We're gonna leave all the defaults there. However, this is a important tab. Okay, so we have some employee data that we wanna track here in the field. So let's go ahead and just click add field. The first one we're gonna add is a string and we will call this name. I don't wanna set it as a primary key or as a display field. We'll leave everything default. I wonder what's in advanced. Oh, okay, these are other uh, SQL options. We do not need those for now. You will notice that the primary key and ID is already created for us here, but we're just gonna leave that alone. We'll add another string called email. We'll add a date called higher date. And we will add active, which is a Boolean. Now let's go over to our pages and start building out our interface. Um, the new page is already here. We're gonna rename that. We'll call that employee page. And then we need to go over to the data sources in the right hand column under the property editor. And let's select employee data that we just have been working on. Okay, now let's add our form. We're gonna head up to the upper left where the widgets are located. Let's click on form, let's drag that into our view. And it's suggesting inherited employee data. And that is what we wanna leave it set as. Now the other one, employee data, I don't know what's different here, but just like some of the questions that I asked in the last video, we're gonna hopefully learn them as we go along. We wanna change this to edit. We're not just gonna be inserting new records, we're gonna be able to change the records that we have in our table. We'll click next. We want everything except for the ID. And then we click finish. Perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna move this form a little bit. Let's, uh, wait. I like the little alignment guides here. It kind of tells you where a good, um, padding level would be and everything. So uh, let's leave it as that. And now we're gonna add a table. Let's head to the table, drag that into our view. We're gonna leave it as inherited employee data. And in this case, we don't actually have any editable fields. Let's leave all the defaults, let's see what we've got here. Okay. That drags some of it off the page. Let's make this, um, I don't want this custom view. Let's do, uh, no, tablet. I guess we'll just leave it as custom. It's got a page kind of layout to it. I'll put it below and I'm gonna actually have to resize this table. No problem. Let's put it here, give it a little padding. Perfect. Well, let's, let's bring it all the way down. Up, ah, and it snaps into place. As I'm doing that, I'm realizing I can actually resize the page here, and then that's what I want. That's a better option. So let's uh, do that, and let's bring it up next to this. 
let's get the table in here and then resize the page to about there. Okay. Resize our table so that it kind of matches. Is that right? Eh. Yeah, that looks good. Oh, it snapped into place. Perfect. So now I think we can test everything. Let's preview. So let's create a record. Simple enough, we just click Create. And we see the record appear here. Now we can actually add names. And in real time, these things, oh, and now it's adjusted its size. Uh, the That's an interesting aspect to this. Just something I'm noticing along the way. Um, I'll put in my own email address there. Higher date, let's say uh, today. Well, let's say I, yesterday. And I am an active employee, perfect. I can create another account. Um, let's call it Robo Jordan. And it'll have jordan at jordanray.com. And he's been working for a week now. Active. Perfect. Now over here I have the option to delete. Next up is styling your app. I'll see you in the next one.